Hi friends, so we have come a long way, uh, this is 8th week into our lecture on risk based engineering and uh, uh, this week's subject is uh, human reliability, uh, very very important subject uh, because uh, we are talking about complex engineering systems and their human actions uh, uh, matter and it has got an impact. In fact, on both the sides, if we want to run an efficient and reliable plant, then, then also human factors are very important. And if we have um, um, uh, complexities of running a plant, and then also it is a human factor. And of course, we all know that. Um, it doesn't mean that humans are doing uh, uh, anything less or any, the, the, they are the one who was um, making the safety benchmark. Uh, an excellent record uh, on safety, especially for nuclear plants. But uh, there are always a residual aspect and this is where the contribution from human error um, is, a, is, a, uh, is a sort of a, a focus uh, wherein we have to ensure that the human errors can further be re reduced. And this is how uh, one of the topic is human reliability. So uh, this is eighth week and now uh, we have another four weeks to go to complete this risk-based engineering program. Uh, let's see uh, uh, what is human reliability. Now for, for, for uh, us to understand uh, what is human reliability in complex um, so engineering system, we have to say that there is a machine, main machine interface. At the back of it, there is a huge uh, a plant uh, which has got uh, uh, hundreds or even thousands of the components they are running uh, and they are performing their job uh, to run the plant uh, that means to ensure the reliability and to provide an indication of any deviation uh, that means if we are moving away from safety so that corrective action can be taken up and that's how the control room uh, plays a very important role and in control room we have humans and we know that in a complex system there is always a redundancy. So that redundancy even gets reflected here also. It gets reflected into many controls and all because you, you know that. Uh, there is always a, you require one channel for operation, you have three channels. So two out of three redundancy uh, kind of things are there. So same, similarly, same thing has been, uh, if, if you see the today's context, uh, human reliability also. There is always a backup uh, in control room also, so that any uh, deviation or any uh, any uh, issue doesn't go unnoticed and because uh, even though the plants have automation system they are built with the safety features and everything uh, design operation everything has been done but as I told you there is always a residual component so this is where we have to take care of uh, human reliability so uh, today I uh, will give you the overview of all the five lectures which will be taken up in this uh, in this uh, uh, week and the first lecture is introduction. Though right since beginning of, of, of this uh, uh, risk-based engineering program, I have been talking about, about uh, human factor but in this week we'll, in a focused manner we will discuss uh, this particular subject. So first of all uh, we will talk about introduction on uh, human, uh, human uh, uh, reliability. Then we will review, the second lecture is um, a review of available methods. Uh, in fact, uh, these methodologies have matured over a period of time and we see, uh, we will discuss few selected methodologies and that's how we will see an overview. And uh, the, uh, so many methodologies are available. Uh, for those selected methodologies, we will see advantages and limitation. And, uh, before we go to the human reliability and all, let us uh, understand uh, one thing. Uh, human factor exp explicitly or implicitly, it forms part of design. Ergonomics and all those factors, they are considered, industrial engineering factors, they are considered so that uh, the uh, equipment or uh, control room design uh, and the location of the instrument is such that the error and uh, you know ease of operation these two forms uh, the major component and of course there is a lot of psychological studies uh, which backs up uh, this design principle so design takes care of the human factor and then the next stage is 
uh, operation. In operation engineering also, human factor is given a due consideration in terms of training people, um, inducting, uh, inducting the uh, youngsters uh, from, uh, from academic institutions, seeing their quality level in terms of, uh, in, in terms of their um, cognition, in terms of their uh, dedication and then uh, a complete training program. You might not believe that a graduate engineer takes almost, undergoes almost uh, two years to four years of training program, um, uh, you know, rigorous training program, and then only he is authorized for operation. So this is how in de uh, design operation, uh, the human factor is taken care of. And now what we will be talking today is the residual and the residual uh, component of human factor uh, and certain thing. Uh, and to that extent, we will see how it can be improved. Then our third lecture will be on a special technique called THERP. Uh, technique for human error rate predi prediction and this technique is basically uh, I would say most popular technique because this is the most comprehensive technique available uh, especially for nuclear domain but it has been adopted in many many fields and that's how THERP has become uh, this was the one uh, in 1975 when the first uh, risk assessment, uh, it is called probabilistic risk assessment study, uh, WASH 1400. It was done as part of that, then it was extended to uh, only nu nuclear. WASH 1400 uh, was dedicated to nuclear, but before that some applications were there in the uh, uh, military uh, areas uh, uh, that takes care of human factor. So that, that is the background. So we will be reviewing two uh, techniques, that is uh, technique for human error rate prediction, number one, and human cognitive reliability. This is another technique uh, that will be uh, going in detail. So our third and fourth uh, lecture respectively will be dedicated to um, THERP and SCR. And uh, uh, now onwards, I'll be using the abbreviations like uh, THERP, uh, SCR instead of uh, going for the complete description technique for human error rate prediction or co human cognitive reliability. To, to that extent, you have to um, uh, keep it in mind uh, okay, we are discussing two techniques and by the time the, uh, this week is over, you will all get acquainted to uh, this uh, technique and their uses and their uh, abbreviations. And then, then based on the lesson taken, uh, because you know operation background and risk assessment uh, background uh, uh, makes you sensitive to what are the plus point of the uh, old techniques and what are the limitations of old technique. So the, based on that. Uh, at, uh, at BRC, we have developed a CQB technique. Uh, this is called consciousness, cognition, conscience, and at brain uh, methodology. You know, so this technique we have developed because we felt in old techniques the human model which was there or, or in most of the techniques don't have but one THERP has got one human model uh, which has been developed for a certain a specific application and uh, then not from the first principle and our objective is to go for generalization. So CQB model will be the last though it, it is very difficult to capture all the academics and uh, um, you know R&D uh, for the CQB model in uh, one lecture but we, we have uh, attempted to uh, you know make a, an attempt to compensate uh, the, the concentrate everything into the one lecture and try to give the best to you so that you and otherwise uh, uh, there is a book risk based engineering written by me it is available in the open domain you can buy it and get a, not only risk based engineering is my book which has been written and you can get all the details on all the talks which i am giving here so i i tried to give you a, a typical scenario by a simple uh, graphical figure um, of course it uh, it uh, uh, it, it, is not, it is not as smart or as uh, uh, you know good like a normal control room but just to uh, start with uh, to given uh, given uh, you know one perception of main machine interface so uh, first question come, comes is why human reliability uh, this need not be human uh, is is uh, one of the major contributors uh, again i'll repeat here it doesn't mean that human is not doing a good job but again we are treating it as a residual component in the safety so uh, objective is to improve and uh, to that extent and there is some some sort of a uh, you know a reality also uh, human contribution uh, in many literature has been has been uh, shown to be right from 50% to 70% and some have gone uh, into to up to 90% also so there is a need to uh, look into human reliability aspect and why further we require an emphasis is human is a complex system human behavior is a complex um, 
at the outset we, we should be able to uh, say it is difficult to model but then uh, some some so one approach that is design operation training uh, you know ergonomics we are coming from one side second thing we are collecting the data and trying to see uh, what a reference model we create in training and uh, training in operation and how best we can do to uh, to model our processes so there is a further reduction uh, of human element uh, for uh, engineering system in general and complex engineering system in particular now uh, human model is there in tharp okay but then the uh, the uh, issue is uh, tharp was uh, published somewhere in 83 85 that era early 80s and uh, you know and then after that uh, the many methods have been developed but uh, uh, the available lit literature which i came across uh, i did not see a, a very uh, very uh, a very uh, representative model uh, for human so uh, but then the way we talk about hardware uh, hardware reliability so we have hardware and then there is a model for that hardware you know if i talk about the diesel system diesel generator it has got a sub systems then the every uh, every uh, uh, system has got a sub system has got a function and those sub systems have the parts they have their own function so that has not happened with the human reliability to that extent so and then one complex thing is human is a uh, is a it is a material plus spirit so it is very difficult to model so consciousness conscience uh, these are the these are the uh, phenomena uh, uh, wherein we can we can use this knowledge available knowledge in the olden books and then the whatever in last uh, 30 60 year consciousness is rel relatively a new field so um, it has evolved only uh, last 30 to 40 years so we are at at a stage of infancy we have more question than answer but then if you see the old literature um, or philosophy there are uh, there are you know um, benchmark of what is to be done and how the uh, the science can be enriched and this is here uh, we are using this available science um, uh, to to be very precise i have taken Uh, input or inspiration from vedas and this uh, upanishads and uh, there because there all the experiments were done at the body level, level. no experimental uh, you know labs and all that so the only thing is the uh, the way we require a scientific framework to establish those principles so uh, here we uh, we made an attempt operating experience and then, and then try to connect these two things then uh, existing approaches uh, typically when we do a risk assessment you find that the uncertainty estimates are a little conservative and probably to some uh, some extent uh, it becomes uh, not at all meaningful because if i have error factor of 10 uh, then uh, it doesn't convey anything to me so that the, this is one of the reason where we have got this one uh, challenges and uh, um, uh you know uh, existing approach uh, whatever we have and then we'll discuss this then consciousness cognition conscience uh, conscience we are roping in because nowadays the we have we have to focus lot of uh, aspects on security risk assessment probabilistic security risk assessment so that is where the conscience uh, uh, falls handy and we can model these things and uh, we can make for safety as well as security also of course uh, security is not the scope of this particular lecture but then uh, it is intimately connected with the safety so nowadays you will find all the documents uh, they are having safety and security both for obvious reason we we have a we have a scenario wherein we have to take care of uh, security aspects also other than the uh, along with the safety aspects now uh, why, why human reliability okay we are we are going and you know uh, discussing about it but you know uh, human aspects are um, there right from conceptualization of any engineering system and it goes through design operation regulation everywhere that means human is uh, uh, involved in all these activities till we go in, even up to the refurbishment and decommissioning and all so that means uh, uh, if the root cause of any failure uh, will definitely uh, will trace back to other than the uh, external events and all that it will trace back to uh, human only so there is uh, uh, it is a misnomer that uh, you know the human factor was responsible for um, everything and the percentage is very high it requires a review actually uh, because Uh, uh because if, if everywhere human is involved in design operation maintenance regulation uh, refurbishment and then finally uh, greenfield conversion so that means human will be there definitely uh, it doesn't mean that humans are doing mistakes and you know something no uh, humans are doing excellent jobs and at the same time engineering side 
try, try, has taken the note and they are trying to reduce their system, their 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 efforts or their tension or stress and um, they are working on passive systems uh, this thing all new new technologies have come passive system then uh, you know um, inherently safe system and uh, those concepts are there which are there in the new engineering system they have been well embraced and then for when we do risk assessment risk assessment human factor takes a common cause failure and human uh, human uh, human factor these two take center stage because they are the major contributing factor to the final risk estimate that we have and then in here we are we are studying human liability because we want to do a root cause analysis we want to do a real root cause analysis uh, uh, not at the higher nodes or higher uh, roots but we go, go down to further down to the roots and try to understand why finally error of omission, uh, omission error of commission why uh, you know uh, lapse or mistake uh, let us go down further and try to understand and that you will be able to do when you have a first principle model of human reliability and then uh, then of course and one of the thing is why we should study human reliability is precursor. The way we do precursor studies for hardware factor, we can do a precursor study for um, uh, for uh, for uh, for human also. Uh, because some tendency, some phenomena can be observed. Okay, this type of and so if suppose it becomes the um, organizational consciousness then th that has to be uh, noted and probably some training retraining or lecture program has to be there and people should be uh, you know warned so it has got a higher connectivity so precursor study human precursor study is one of the important uh, aspect now uh, the biggest question comes when we talk about human reliability uh, we don't have human model so what is human I um, mean, uh, if you look at the literature, uh, various dictionaries, uh, you will find that uh, human uh, have been translated into a person and somewhere it has been translated in, into um, sort of, uh, um, I will come to those things and there is a real difficulty. Ki, if we have to define a human, um, we, have to, we have to go beyond our uh, scient uh, existing scientific realms and then uh, try to define it there. Um, so, uh, ideally speaking, there should be scientific because in this era we have we will accept only scientific uh, based method. Even if we use some philosophy, uh, we can uh, take it as a assumption or we can take it as a postulation. But then finally, we have to uh, we have to uh, say that it works and it is relevant actually. Um, and then uh, the human model, uh, what we have. Uh, it should meet all the requirements of our risk analysis. So that is one, so that means you will require action based, cognitive based, uh, you know, and that hardware component should be complexity of hardware component. So all those things are required. So uh, with this, uh, there is a motivation to review the human reliability and there is second lecture on human reliability review, uh, whatever methods that, that are available. And that's why human reliability uh, is a fundamental thing and uh, more efforts and resources to be uh, put on this kind of things uh, if you want to uh, ensure or make the system more safe and uh, more reliable. Um, okay, so just a review, few, uh, few search have been made and we have seen, you can see the Oxford Dictionary, we have uh, Merriam Dictionary, uh, Webster Dictionary, then we have uh, this uh, uh, dictionary.com, uh, four or five sources we have reviewed and what came in our hand is a so very uh, existing thing like human has been translated into in a noun form as person. It doesn't say anything other than what human said. And then adjective is they're trying to say uh, with me connect with the people, not dealing with anyone. That means uh, other side of the scenario uh, to define human. Even in the second reference, uh, we have got bipedal, two-footed, uh, uh, two-footed an animal or two-footed person uh, who walks. And uh, uh, definition in uh, uh, zoology, it says homo sapiens. Okay, so we have got one stage ahead, homo sapiens, that means it goes into the medical parlance or uh, the psychological parlance, you know. So uh, what we got from here is uh, that, okay, uh, action part is uh, there. Then definition of human, now again we have a little elaborate in reference 3, uh, that is dictionary.com. Uh, any individual uh, of the uh, genus homo. Homo was, I mean, if you study this uh, taxonomy of human, uh, human, you'll find there are, uh, this is very complicated. Homo is one entity, uh, especially member of the homo sapiens. That's uh, a previous one and this one is almost same. Second thing is a person is uh, especially distinguished from other animal. Now, if you look at that closely, if I want to model a human, these are all, uh, uh, they are from, I'm not able to infer much from this definition. Okay. So, 
लास्ट डेफिनेशन अगेन द एनी लिविंग एक्सटेंट मेंबर ऑफ द फैमिली होमोसाइड सो डिफरेंट फैमिलीज नेम दे आर टेकिंग एंड इट हैज गॉट इंटेलिजेंस वन मोर एलिमेंट वी गॉट दैट इंटेलिजेंस मे बी मोर इंटेलिजेंट देन एनिमल्स ऑफकोर्स एंड स्पीच is its character an erect carriage means uh, animals normally they are uh, you know not erect uh, generally most of the animals um, they walk on four feet and so they, these are the uh, input that we that we have here but we are not able to so whatever available methodologies were there there and from there we try to get what are what uh, how to define human what helps us is this is uh, human so blue i got some input homo sapiens a person then if i talk about the faculty yes mental faculty brain there is a direct or indirect reference to this and then sensory organs um, in uh, in therp uh, sensory organs have been considered uh, you know explicitly uh, and then action fa faculties so like like in uh, uh, some uh, human reliability methodology there is a cognitive part and there is action part so these terms are also there so we got this uh, whatever we got from the old literature is intelligence interactions these are the terms we got to define human and then the complex interactions on that line the inner layer is cognitive skills yes human do have and then norms procedures rules so they, those also came feel i could not see in any of the method then social factors yes bipedalism to leg, leg person and then consciousness cognition there is uh, consciousness can be uh, were considered some, somewhere in some some literature uh, like you know awareness focus attention but i think a very very uh, fundamental uh, element is required to uh, for, uh, when we look at the generalization and future aspects of human modeling and to make human, human modeling more robust so this direct references was not not there they were in terms of symptoms but not uh, in terms of the phenomena itself so uh, then uh, we have fundamental human qualities survival survival is uh, why why uh, we are discussing about survival here many of the mistakes they happen uh, in control room scenario especially uh, if i don't do it what will happen my career my, sometimes you are in difficulty my life so survival is there in one form or the other form or my reputation or my something so some mistakes are they are responsible which a person feels threatened and then uh, some uh, actions and then of course intelligence quotient is there of course ego sometimes some of the which is not there in the literature uh, and then uh, curiosity yes it has been given in one of the i think uh, uh, i think in the third only then learning uh, there is a learning references there but learning is a very very at cognitive level at consciousness level and then finally feedback and then input. so we'll see how, um, what is the depth required and how your emotions yes uh, it is some some references there but i didn't find any strong reference to emotions L languages uh, these are the components so you can see many voids are there and some voids i have not captured here because uh, the further when you do as you do research and all that you uh, you uh, start getting those uh, elements actually so human liability analysis well, how to define because we are talking about the subject so we should know what we are talking about so uh, here uh, we say Uh, that human liability analysis is a discipline provides methods and tool for qualitative and quantitative estimates okay and then uh, some element of prediction of error is also there and accordingly if you form the closed loop the way you understood the through human liability what are the factors responsible then we can work on those condition and we when improve the human liability also now uh, the uh, the second thing is human liability data and models uh, updated by performance shaping factor performance sh uh, shaping factor are the Uh, are the factors uh, on which per, uh, human performance control room scenario then stress uh, level uh, then all those things the, they they uh, will see uh, all those details and then un uncertainty evolution every we discussed in our uh, hardware reliability every element has to be seen in the context of uh, if uncertainty is very high the uh, available data or model they become uh, meaningless to the, i mean just i am taking the extreme position they are not uh, a very useful sort of thing so uh, uncertainty is a very important role now significance of humano uh, if we see any accident i have taken only one accident that is fukushima in uh, two, uh, march 112011 and here here the uh, the report of the commission uh, which says that 
the fukushima because you know uh, hardware failure and all they uh, they they are okay but actually accident becomes an accident when the consequences uh, uh, reach public domain so so it was termed in this uh, by commission as a man made disaster various factors they have uh, looked out the culture plant culture the regulatory culture and the kind of complacency which are which was there and then the overall uh, organizational aspects so um, if we read the report i will not go into the details of it uh, and then uh, the uh, some somewhere direct reference was there a tsunami uh, uh, which was a natural factor then um, which was caused by the earthquake somewhere at a distance plant uh, then the it crossed the water uh, flooded the uh, plant because the height of the uh, the barrier or the uh, you know boundary uh, was less than what it was uh, discussed in the regulatory uh, this thing so uh, so let us uh, let us uh, this is one of the motivating factor that you know uh, the plant should be uh, always uh, thoughtful and i think people are thoughtful that's why we don't have accident three ex accident in last so many years and uh, cumulative time if we say it will go to somewhere around um, tens of thousands so uh, three accidents but then uh, improvement is one of the key that uh, drive, drives us and motivate us now um, if we do not discuss the th uh, three c's and the role of th what is the uh, role of three c's cognition of course it was recognized as a major factor but consciousness consciousness which drives the cognition or which is the bias for the cognition if consciousness is lower or higher we don't have to explain in medical term if we, we are less conscious uh, you know, if we are normally conscious uh, what will happen how our faculties they work so it cannot be separated from this and it has got consciousness has got a much deeper meaning but will remain at the level of brain only and faculty uh, uh, various other uh, physiological faculties now uh, um, if we, if we uh, look at that that then consciousness becomes the core and fundamental factor okay um, uh, in uh, in uh, when we try to model the human actually okay and then um, uh, we saw uh, when we were uh, uh, doing very risk assessment studies uh, all the models there is something lacking um, even though therp is very very comprehensive approach but then we were not happy uh, because you know every plant, plant has got its own characteristic and so uh, every human uh, uh, you know uh, you can say uh, has got different characteristic so a reference model for the human for a human reference model has to be made for the plant then only we get the uh, realistic uh, method and then what it uh, we conclude here is that human model is the thing which we have to have it okay now uh, human uh, error as uh, root cause uh, so far uh, any event and finally you uh, say ki root cause analysis is not complete till you go to the uh, human element but uh, this is as simple as uh, you know you can say um, actually a deep rooted exercise is required deep rooted understanding is required what is the cause why the human uh, subject uh, uh, the person he did the uh, mistake uh, what was going on in his mind because he was a trained person uh, uh, and at outside we do, didn't see any abnormality so for everything there is a uh, there is a cause so we have to go down to uh, error of com uh, below uh, error of commission to error of omission to uh, you know lapse mistake this one layer which we discussed uh, very often further layer what was happen at physiological level then what was was uh, what was happening at the um, uh, mental level and uh, why then only we will be able to reduce it because if root cause is not well understood then the uh, whatever action we take that also will not be fitting so this is how it is so uh, uh, and uh, some root cause analysis they stop at the direct cause only they don't go to of course every root cause analysis cannot have uh, root because uh, root cause analysis is a very uh, resource consuming exercise but then when it comes to safety or risk those uh, three four event in a year uh, uh, it should be analyzed uh, threadbare then uh, then other emotional aspects and all that has also has to be discussed actually okay uh, now let us see overview of just here i am providing a small overview of what uh, uh, what we have discussed so far so um, uh, the introduction is like this the scope of human reliability uh, is the theme of this uh, lecture uh, uh, here and scope of introduction is uh, human machine interface definition of human 
review of existing HR methods and gap areas, relevance of human reliability and risk analysis. So this is the recap sort of thing for the introduction chapter. And I think we, we here, now we made, the, made a starting to uh, understand uh, the preliminary concept of human reliability. And in next lecture, we'll take the, um, for a thorough review of uh, major procedures on human reliability or major techniques for human reliability or major methodologies for human reliability. Thank you.